There are situations where we need to alter certain characteristics of our concrete mix. Now to do so, we have to add certain chemicals. These chemicals are referred to as admixtures. The purpose of this video will be to go through the various types of admixtures and what their uses are. So a brief overview of what I will be talking about in this video. I'll be discussing what admixtures are and then I'll be moving on to describe the types that are available. Then we'll have a look at the applications and finally uh, I'll introduce some examples to you on where these admixtures had been applied. Let's start by defining what admixtures are in general. So as I said at the start of the video, sometimes we need to change certain characteristics of our concrete mix. Let's say for example in a particular project you desire your concrete to be more workable. In this instance, uh, we can do so by adding certain admixtures to our concrete mix. These admixtures are often added either during the mixing, so with the water, or before uh, water is added, so with, with the cement, with the powder cement. When you look at it from a volume perspective, admixtures form less than 2% of the overall concrete mix. In Australia, the types of admixtures that are available in concrete and the, their applications in terms of uh, percentages that uh, are allowed are specified in AS1478. Why do we use admixtures? Certain projects we require, say for example, the trucks, the mixers to travel long distances. During that traveling period, we need to maintain our concrete workable, so we add admixtures to do so. Uh, sometimes we need to improve the durability of the concrete, let's say for instance uh, in hot climates or even in cold climates. So there are specific admixtures that would be applicable to both of these uh, climates. And then uh, overall, uh, most of the admixtures, what they help us do is they help us achieve an enhanced workability structure of the overall concrete mix. Let's look at the admixture types that are available in construction. The types can be classified into five major classes, and the five major classes are what you see in front of you on the screen. So you've got your air and training admixtures, you've got your retarding uh, admixtures, water reducers, plasticizers, and then you have your accelerating admixtures. We'll have a look at each of these uh, now. So air in training, let's start with that. So what, what's an air in training admixture? An air in training admixture is a, an admixture that introduces bubbles in your concrete mix. Why do we need to introduce bubbles? Well, uh, these air in training admixtures are very important when in cold climates, when you're experiencing freezing and thawing. So this cyclical uh, sort of behavior that oscillates between freezing and thawing. As we all are aware from the previous video that I explained the process of uh, freezing and thawing and its impact on, on concrete, cracks are generated due to that process. Now to overcome these cracks, we introduce air and training admixtures. And what they do is they, um, they create these bubbles in your concrete mix it makes the concrete mix more cohesive um, and hence your concrete mix can withstand the forces of freezing and thawing. Now, in terms of um, dosage, it's about 15 to 120 mil that we add per 100 kilograms of cement. So generally speaking, when it comes to admixtures, you typically add it uh, with respect to the amount of cement that's present. So it's always per 100 kilograms of cement that's available. Mostly air in training admixes are utilized in roads and for runway pavements. Some examples of air in training materials include wood resins, animal fat, and salts of organic acids. So all of these materials, they act as air in training agents. But you have to be aware of two main things. If you overuse air in training uh, admixtures in your concrete mix, that can lead to loss of durability. And as a result, you can lose the compressive strength of your concrete. So you have to be aware when you're applying these admixtures. Let's move on to the second type of admixtures and that's the retarding admixture. 
Now, these admixtures, what they do is they delay the setting of your concrete. And this is important, again, if, you've, if you're traveling long distances, you need to maintain the concrete in a workable state. Now, the uh, reducing admixtures, what they also do is that they reduce the heat of hydration. Um, and by reducing the heat, of heat, the heat of hydration, what happens is that you're slowing down the reaction, the hydration reaction, and hence why the concrete takes longer to set. In terms of dosage, it's 0.2 to 0.6% of cement mass. Again, you have to be aware that overusing um, retarders, that can lead to bleeding, and you might experience as well some reduction in your concrete strength. Applications of uh, retarders, they're typically used for large construction projects such as dams. That's where there's a huge surface area and hence the heat of hydration is really high for the concrete that's poured. Very hot climates as well. If you've got projects where it's super hot, you want to reduce that heat of hydration to avoid, let's say, uh, plastic cracks, for instance, in your concrete, you would utilize retarders. And in terms of materials that can act as retarders, you have your sugars such as sucrose that is a very commonly adopted material as a retarder in concrete mixes. Moving on to water reducers and super plasticizers. So this is the third type of admixtures that we can add to our concrete mix. So what the water reducers do, they reduce the, uh, so they reduce the amount of water, overall water that you need. So in doing so, they increase the workability of your concrete without having of super wet concrete mix. And that's very important because you can achieve high strength, but still maintain the water content at a very low level. Uh, water reduces typically reduce the water content by 15% in concrete mixes. When you have a high range water reducer, that becomes labeled as a super plasticizer. So that's why these two, the water reducers and the super plasticizers are, are related to one another. Now it's important to note that in order to apply water reduces in the correct way, you have to consider your concrete temperature, you have to look at the chemical composition of your concrete, and you have to also consider the cement content in your concrete mix. In terms of uh, agents that can act as water reducers, we have sulfonated melamine condensates, so that's one example of a, of a reducing agent. And the other example of a commonly adopted reducing, uh, reducing agent is the sulfonated Nephthalene condensates. So these are two chemicals that are used uh, in construction. Now, super plasticizers, as I said, these are very strong water reducers. So they reduce the water content by 30% while st still maintaining the strength and the workability of your concrete. Workable concrete is important because sometimes, you know, if, especially if you, you're pouring concrete where you have thin um, thin, thin elements. There's, you know, heaps of reinforcement and it's super crowded. You need workable concrete to make it easier to work with. Plus if you say, for instance, you've got, you know, high rise buildings and you're pumping concrete from the bottom to the top. Now to reduce the amount of energy that you need to pump that concrete to high levels, you need workable concrete and hence you'd use super plasticizers. In terms of strength, you can get more than 65 MPA which is very high strength of uh, concrete with super plasticizers. Uh, however, if you over add super plasticizers, so if, you, if there's a, a tremendous increase in super plasticizers in the, in the concrete mix, that can lead to some settling issues. Um, but overall, generally speaking, if you use it in the correct dosage, uh, what happens what tends to happen is that you get a more durable structure that is less prone to be attacked by chloride ions and hence you are less likely to experience corrosion of your seal reinforcement as i said uh, it's typically used in high-rise buildings when we need to pump uh, concrete from a, a lower level to a higher level and that that's because we need workable concrete to to be able to do so in terms of the uh, dosage of uh, super plasticizers in your concrete mix, it's between uh, 600 to 1,000 mils per 100 kg of cement. So that's approximately 1% of your uh, cement mass is composed of super plasticizers. 
um, the in terms of uh, projects as well, you can see that we've got this Optus Stadium, which is in Australia. Uh, so any project that requires high performance concrete, uh, super plasticizers would be the choice of admixtures to add to your concrete mix. Accelerating admixtures is another type of uh, admixtures that are commonly added to the concrete mix. They enhance the hydration of the cement, they shorten the setting uh, time, um, and you start to notice that the concrete would set within 24 hours when you have uh, accelerating admixtures added to your concrete mix. The dose is between 1 to 2% of the cement mass. You have to be aware that when you over add again this uh, accelerating uh, admixture to your concrete mix, you can get excessive heat of hydration and your concrete is very prone to quick setting. In terms of applications, it's utilizing cold climates. That's where we need to increase the heat of hydration and in tidal zones as well. So tidal zone construction where you've got um, a concrete that needs to be poured next to, let's say, uh, it, within a marine environment, and you were, and you and and the tide, and you're afraid of the tide tide coming sort of towards uh, your concrete structure. So what you do is you'd utilize an accelerator to increase the speed of setting for concrete before the tide arrives. And you're able to accomplish uh, the concrete pouring process just before the arrival of the tide. Now, in terms of the materials that are adopted as accelerating and mixtures, you've got mineral salts such as calcium nitrate that is commonly added. A very important question is whether you're able to mix these admixtures together. In, in certain cases, you can. So, for instance, water reducing agents can be mixed with accelerating admixtures. Water reducers as well can be mixed with accelerators and uh, air entraining admixtures. However, to stay on the safe side, you need to make sure that under a lab setting that this mixing procedure isn't going to impact your concrete mix. So I do hope that this video helped to explain the various types of admixtures that are applicable in construction.